Live on BBC Two in a moment is Russell Harty with pop star Tony Basil and from the days of the silent screen pianist Edith Ralphs. On BBC One, Richard Briars stars as a wayward journalist and Hannah Gordon as his long-suffering landlady. Goodbye, Mr Kent. Yes, I thought I'd stay and keep an eye on the fertiliser. There's some very strange people about it. Yes, and they're all in here. Get your feet off the dahlias. Is that my grow bag you're sitting in? Yes, and I want you to know it's the most uncomfortable grow bag I've ever slept on in love in. A frog crawled up my trouser leg in the middle of the night. We must simply pray for his recovery. But it's very cold in here. Oh, I'm terribly sorry if I'd been expecting. Guess I would have provided a, a, a hot water bottle and an extra sack. If all right, all right. If you made a mistake, now you're sorry. Let's go and have breakfast. Uh, breakfast? Nothing fancy. Continental will do. Can I remind you that you are no longer a lodger in my house? Or my garden shed, for that matter? If you're referring to the little contretemps we had last night, forget it. I've decided that it bygones be bygones. I am going to count up to one, after which I shall call the police. Victoria, you're overwrought. What? <laughs> Look, let's talk about it over a nice cup of tea. Cup of tea is a very good idea. Ah, oh, that's more like the Victoria I know. And there's a cafe next to the railway station. Now, <laughs> if you don't mind, I need to wait. Oh, oh, I... <laughs> How do I get talked into these things? Why can I never say no? Uh, while you're about it, you wouldn't have a piece of dry bread, would you? A crust would you? <laughs> you toasted it is easier, with uh, butter perhaps and a dash of marmalade. Not the thick cut, I find it with peats. I've got a very nice piece of steak. Really? Shall I put it on your eye now, or shall I hit you first? <laughs> Victoria, what's the matter? All I want is a piece of toast. It's not much to ask for a man who's spent a very cold night communing with a compost. You don't have to remind me. The wind's behind you. <laughs> Besides, toast is out. Toast is on the blink. Ah, technical trouble, eh? I'm your man. No, you are not. So I used to mend toasters in the RAF. They had 20 of them grounded at one time. I had them all operational within a week. Not coming in, Travis. Well, uh, worth a try. Remember the television set? Perfectly all right until you started fiddling about with it. No, it wasn't. Patrick Moore's face was green. Yes, and it suited him. Then you had to start fiddling about, and look what happened. Just a couple of little things wrong, that's all. No sound and no picture. <laughs> well, you can get police messages on it. Let me in, I'll finish the job. Look, why don't you just finish your tea and be on your way? What have you got against me, Victoria? Why is my persona so non grata? Well, it's because you're thoughtless, you drink, you gamble, you tell lies, you're unreliable, and those are your best qualities. <laughs> That's just a facade. Deep down, I'm very different. Deep down, you're worse. There's someone at the door. I know. Aren't you going to answer it? Every time I hear someone at the door, I am terrified it's you. <laughs> Excuse me. Good morning, madam. Go on, I'll take this. I'm awfully sorry, postman. He's been sleeping in the grow bag. Nice one, Travis, but no chance. Just give me my little piece. There's a lot of stuff here. My word. Not your birthday, is it? It's none of your business. It is. It is, isn't it? It's your birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to... Happy... I must say, you don't look it. Don't look what? I don't know, but you don't look it. Flattery will get you precisely where you are now. Can I have my mail, please? <laughs> You've got one here from Leighton Buzzard. How can a beautiful woman like you possibly know anyone from Leighton Buzzard? Travis, please. But I haven't bought you anything. What would you like? A get well card. <laughs> I see. All right. All right. That's how the land lies, is it? Right. You don't have to draw me a picture. I don't. I really thought we had something going, you and I. Something intangible. Something something you couldn't quite put your finger on. Oh, we did. The rent. <laughs> right, that's it then. Thank Fine. You. Fair enough. 
If I'm not welcome here, I know where I will be welcome. I shall return to my ex-wife. Go away. Genevieve, what's the matter? Let me in. No. That's no answer and you know it. How's this for an answer? Clear off. Genevieve, please, you're annoying the neighbour. Oh, I'll do what I like with my own neighbours. Genevieve, <laughs> darling, it's Travis, darling. Travis, you remember? The man used to try your cooking out on all those years. <laughs> oh, you haven't forgotten all the good times, surely? Remember that dream holiday? Canvey Island in October? <laughs> the Harbour Lights Hotel, Room 10, eh? Only, wait a minute, that was Gloria. <laughs> if you don't go away, I shall call the police. Why is every woman I know obsessed with the police? Am I some kind of monster? Well? I'm thinking about it. <laughs> oh, Genevieve, what is the magic password that gets me beyond this door? Just two quid on my taxi. Where's my money? Yeah, I, 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 won't, I won't be a minute. I'll be, I'll be right with you. Yeah. Uh, uh, Genevieve, why don't we talk about money? Money? Did you say money? Yeah. I'm well aware I owe you some maintenance and I want to settle it up here and now. Oh, Travis. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Where did you spend the night in the pigsty? It was a silly, it was a grow bag. What is a small change for the taxi? How small? Three quid to cover it. Mm. Same old Travis. I'll pay him. Hello, Cuba, sir. <laughs> One thing I cannot stand is a cat who bears a grudge. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Don't get jumping, Genevieve. I'm just staying for a little while. Oh, no, you're not. Just like it's straight. I won't live that long. Nobody will. Now, you go straight back to Mrs. Jones. I can't do that. She was beginning to get a bit serious. She's thrown you out, hasn't she? That's one way of looking at it. Mm. Now, what about the money? Well, don't keep on about that. You don't look as if you're short of a bob or two. Oh, that has nothing to do with you. I only let you in here because you promised to pay up. And I shall just give me time a month at the most. That's what you said when I paid for our honeymoon. Happy day, Genevieve. Now, what are you doing? Now, Genevieve, don't, 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 don't be childish. You are not stopping here, and that's fine. Well, at least let me have a shave. You're not seeing me at my best. You have a best. No, I promise you, I'll just have a quick shave, and I'll take you straight into town and give you a slap up meal. Mm, I can't afford it. <laughs> oh, by the way, a man called round here last week about the payments on the piano. He wants to know when you're going to start. You didn't give my address, did you? Oh, well, certainly. I don't want him smashing my place up. Now, you must pay the man. Do you understand, Travis? Travis? What's this? <laughs> what does it look like? It's a razor. What's it doing here? Well, if you must know, it's Clifford. He's a friend. You mean you've had a man in here, in my absence? I don't remember anything in our agreement about becoming a nun. Well, I must say, I'm deeply shocked. No sooner is my back turn, or the place is swarming with Cliffords. <laughs> Travis, you left two years ago. <laughs> don't split hairs. <laughs> Look, you're not my keeper. I'll go out with whoever I like. I don't mind you going out with them. It's bringing these young Laparios back here, I object to. <laughs> well, I never said Clifford was young. And what the hell has it got to do with you anyway? It has got everything to do with me. Just because we split up doesn't mean I've lost all affection for you. I'm concerned you, gentlemen. You deserve the best. That's what I always gave you. <laughs> what? I mean, how could you do it? How could you do it? I can just picture the scene. You reclining on the settee wearing that sexy evening dress I bought you in Fulton. <laughs> And then, in comes Mr. Wonderful. Shirt open to the navel, chest full of hair and gold medallions, both are different. He slides across the floor like a panther. He's got water on the knee. All right, he limps across the floor like a panther. And he's next to you, breathing all those sweet nothings that made him car salesman of the year, Hendon Branch. Have you quite finished? And as you sit there listening to romantic music on my stereo, reclining on my settee that I bought, beneath the shelf that I put up. Do you ever spare a single thought for me? I did last Tuesday. The bookshelf fell on his head. <laughs> Serves him right, smooth-talking little creep. How oh, dare you talk about him like that? You know nothing about him. Anyway, he's not a salesman from Hendon. It's Cricklewood. The garage is immaterial. Just tell me one thing. What has he got that I have? About 30,000 a year. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Genevieve, listen to me. 
I think you've painted a wrong picture of this chap. He sounds awfully nice. <laughs> what did you say? He says, it's always been your trouble. You jump to conclusions. A woman like you shouldn't be on your own. You've so much to offer a man. There's so much love in you. Oh, no, you don't. Pardon? I know what you're up to, and it won't work. I'm sorry, I'm not quite with you. <laughs> if you thought it would save you money, you'd marry me off to a gorilla. <laughs> Only a rich one. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, darling, you're overtired. What you need is a nice cup of tea. Yes. Yes, I think I do. Good. Burn the kettle on over a cup of chocolate. <laughs> Hi, Mum. Hi, Mum. Hi, Mum. Hello, Lucy. You look cheerful. Travis has just made me the happiest woman in the world. He hasn't proposed. <laughs> no, he's left. Oh, no. He was going to fix the telly. And the bathroom rail and all the other things he's broken. You know, we must have the only fridge in the world where you open the door and the light goes out. <laughs> Be it ever so broken, there is no place like home. Any more peanut butter? No. Well, always after something. Stop moaning. Have you, um... Noticed anything different about this room? Travis is cooking. You've got it off the ceiling. <laughs> that was ages ago. Try again. That shelf. Travis has put it up at last. Forget Travis. This is about me. I don't know. Give me a clue. All right. It's my birthday. Your birthday? Well done. Oh, crikey. I haven't forgotten it. Don't think that. It's just that I had so much on my mind that I just... Forgot. Yes. <laughs> Never mind. I'm going to get you a super present. You don't have to do that? Yes, I do. You're not a bad mum as mums go. Thank you. I'm going to get you the best present I can afford. Can you lend me a fiver? Oh. <laughs> not for me. Be fair. Oh, and if you give me a list of towns, I can get it this morning. Which reminds me, can I have some money for bowling? Well, won't the fiver cover it? I suppose so. We can always go by the Oxfam shop. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mum. I'll put the cards up for you. <laughs> Good old Travis. I wonder if he had anything to do with designing the Titanic. <laughs> Travis, hurry up. I'm supposed to be going out. Genevieve, darling, get the animal out of my case. The what? Animal. My aftershave. Drive women wild. <laughs> you don't need aftershave. You drive me wild just breathing. Get it yourself. <laughs> Whatever happened to love, honour and a bed? Oh, hurry up. Clifford will be here in a minute. Oh, yes, now, Clifford, yes. Now, when he comes, you live in the kitchen and I'll give you a build-up. But for heaven's sake, do something about your hair. We well, you don't want to spoil your prospects. What prospects? Now, understand this. I never intend to get married again. The mere thought of it would drive me... Oh, there he is and I'm not ready. Now, look, you let him in. And please don't say any more than you have to. I'll be back as soon as I can. Right. <laughs> Come in, Clippy, old son. Victoria. Settle in. Victoria, you didn't have to come around in person. You could have apologized on the phone, but thank you. I'm right here. I'll leave in five minutes. I'll be ready. Uh, look, you don't understand. I understand, all right. Water under the bridge. You want me back again. What? And I haven't forgotten about your birthday. I'm going to buy you a very special present. We can adjust the rent accordingly. I don't believe it. I'm dreaming. No, it's my aftershave. Don't stand too close. Animal. <laughs> sit down, sit down. I, is your ex-wife in? She is indeed, yes. She's doing a repair job in the bathroom. Why, haven't you broken now? Oh. <laughs> Same old Victoria. Have a drink while you're waiting. Uh. <laughs> I'll have a small dictionary, but go easy on the soda. <laughs> Isn't it marvellous? The moment my back turns, she changes everything around. Travis, I don't want to drink. I've come about my car for me. Cotton? Yes, if you remember, you used the car yesterday, so naturally you took the keys with you. Uh, yes, a minute. Uh... Can I get something straight? You mean you're not inviting me back? No, I am not inviting you back, so don't let's have any arguments. Let me have my keys, please. No arguments. I'm not giving you any arguments. If you want the car, please, you can order. Thank you. There's the bathroom. Yeah. You sure about this? You won't have any regrets? It's your last chance. All right, enough said. <laughs> I'll go and get the keys from the bathroom. Genevieve. 
Tell Clifford I'm just coming. You know, it's not Clifford, it's Victoria. Who? My landlady, Mrs. Jones. She can't take you back. What is that? No. But I'm sure if you put in a good word, a sort of reference. A reference? For you? That's like the Queen asking Willie Hamilton for a reference. <laughs> you want her to take you back, don't you? Oh, I do, I do. All right, can we get here? Hello, I'm Genevieve. Uh, we've spoken on the phone. Victoria, yes, how do you do? How do you do? Oh, do sit down. I'm sorry to barge in like this, but Travis went off with my car keys. Uh-huh. So like dear old Travis. Um, would you like 